the other choice. Something interesting happens frequently with the people who are dealing with difficult relationships. I've noticed a pattern, I've done it myself, and I'm certain that you have done it. And that is, when somebody that we love, somebody that we care about, somebody that we're worried about, makes a choice, we often excuse the choice or buy into the fact that the person has no other choice, and then we act appropriately. Are you confused? Let me explain. Okay, people make their own choices. There is rarely a time where there is only one choice. Usually there are multiple choices. And when a person makes a choice, it is because that is what the person chooses. It is not because the person has to, it is because that is the choice that is made. So when somebody makes that choice that we don't agree with, that we think is wrong, that we worry about, we sometimes make that excuse and get confused. Why is that person making that choice? Or we think, oh my, we're trapped by that choice. We have to respond accordingly and maybe let that person off the hook or, or bail that person out. Not so. Let me give you an example. A mother is talking to her son about the fact that he is on, let's say, some medications for depression, and it's dangerous for him to be drinking alcohol while he's taking that medication. So in pleading with her son to stop drinking so that he can safely take his medication, she is thinking that her son is going to say, you're right, I shouldn't drink. Instead, the son says, well, then I'll stop taking my medication. Well, of course, the mother's confused because this is not the outcome she wanted. It's not the best outcome. It is not what she expected the son to say. She thought she could convince him to stop drinking. So when the son chooses that, she's confused. Why did he make that choice? Instead, she'll say, well, maybe he's confused. Maybe he doesn't understand. Maybe, but the reality is that the son is sending a message. When it comes to the two choices, I would rather drink than take my medication for my depression. That is the message that is being sent by that choice. Let's take this one. A mother complains to her adult daughter that, that she's lonely, that she has no life, that she desperately needs her adult daughter to make adjustments and to give this mother more time, more attention, and uh, the mother is demanding that. So the adult daughter thinks, I have to do this. I have no other choice. This is what my mother needs. This is what my mother demands my mother can't do anything else. When in reality, the mother does have other choices. The mother could work on getting a life of her own, making friends, getting involved in activities, getting out. And the mother could choose to understand that it's unhealthy for her to demand too much from her adult daughter and that she is putting her daughter into an unhealthy place by demanding those things. She could do all of that, but instead she chooses to remain helpless and to demand that her daughter make the adjustments in order to meet her needs. So I hear this often from um, people who will say, well, my spouse says that he or she wants to stay in the marriage and wants to work on the marriage, but I don't see any action. I see words, but I don't see action. Or my uh, partner says, uh, you know, he promises to work on things but there's no change. What is that telling you? That is telling you that the choice that the person is making is to not work on the relationship, is to not do anything differently. We have to look at people's behaviors. We have to consider the options that they could choose. I mean, be creative. Look at the reality of the circumstances. Stop excusing and rationalizing what a person is doing. And, and look at the full range of options that is available so that you can look at the message that the choice that the person makes is truly sending you so you can make wiser choices in how to respond. Matthew 12, 34 says, for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
Matthew 15, 18 through 20 says, but the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. These make a man unclean. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what make a man unclean, but eating with unwashed hands does not make a man unclean. What this, these verses are kind of illustrating is that it is from what comes within a person from the inside out that truly tells you what's going on. The same thing with choices. The things that come from within a person's opportunity to choose are the things that are important to that person. They are sending a very clear message to you. You need to heed that message so that you can make wise decisions for yourself. Thank you for watching this video on Change My Relationship.